The best way to get better at programming is to practice. And in this example, we want to create a button and add it to our JFrame window that we created in a previous example. As always, this file is available for download. Use the link provided below in the description. We'll pause for a couple seconds so you can download it and then you can follow along with us. All right, so let's get started. Now, the first thing we need to do is anytime we're going to be working with events, that is things that we want to do to something like pressing a button, we need to import a new package. So we're going to say import Java dot awt dot event. This is a package of event classes that are going to allow us to do a lot of different things. We're going to focus just on the click event handler and we'll deal with that in a few minutes. The next thing we want to do is create a J button. You'll notice that most of the elements that we're going to deal with have the letter J in front of it. So J button, I'm just going to call this J button for simplicity equals new J button. And you'll notice that there's a few things I can do, such as adding an icon to it or giving it an action already. We're going to do a basic string text and we're going to say, press me. Now there's a few additional things that we're going to need to do, such as we need to say how the JFrames layout is going to look, and we're going to need to decide where we're going to add that J button. So let's come in here and set our layout for our JFrame. And we're going to use null. The null layout manager is the one where we have to implicitly set everything. So now we're going to come over here and say, okay, J button dot set bounds. And this is going to be our X and Y position and then the width and height of our element. So we're going to say it's going to start at 50, 50, and our width is going to be 200 pixels wide and 75 pixels tall. Just to kind of give you an idea of how big this is going to be. Next, we're going to create our event handler. And our event handler is going to be what's going to happen when we have an event. In this case, when we press on it. So we're going to say J button dot add action listener. And then we're going to be looking for a new action listener to add to this. Now we've used anonymous objects before for this. However, the action listener object in this case is actually an abstract object. So we're going to have to create this special object. So we're going to say new action listener. And you notice that inside this is the constructor, but then it gives us braces. This is where we can create our method and fill in that abstract method so that it's no longer an abstract class and it's something that we can do. If you look at this kind of hovering over it, you can see we have to implement an inherited abstract method that's action performed. So I'm going to come in here and say public void action performed. This isn't quite complete yet. We still need a action event, which is a parameter that's going to be passed in. And we'll just call this event. Now we can call this E, we can call this event. It doesn't really matter. Notice that now that I have this method, action listener is set. Inside of here, what I want to do is just do something to let us know that, hey, yes, this button was pressed. So I'll say J button dot set text. This is another way that I can set the text on a button. I've been pressed. Now, obviously we could do other things. We're just trying to keep it simple here. So now we have an action listener attached to a button. We have a location for the button, but believe it or not, we do not have it added to our J frame yet. That's the last thing that we need to do. So I'm going to come over here, J frame dot add. And what I'm going to do is add a component. What component am I going to add? Well, J button. And that's all I need to do. Now, if I run this, up comes my screen. You can see I did make it wider than taller this time. I have a huge button. And if I say press me, it recognizes that event. That is that thing that happened. And it now changes to say I've been pressed. What happens if I click it again? Well, notice that nothing happens. Well, that's only half true. Nothing changes. That event still occurs. We still set that text, but the text is what's already there. So we could set up some sort of counter if we want to maybe alternate back and forth. Click me, don't click me. You know, there's things that we could do. This was just a really simple example. And you're going to see buttons that often don't change their text. Usually they're doing something else. They're going to be saving a document or loading a document or other types of things. So don't worry too much about what is or isn't here.
Hopefully this example on how to build a GUI app was helpful for you. If so, please give the video a like and consider subscribing so you can see more videos on how to get better at programming.